Not long after simple exponential smoothing had been invented, people started developing alternatives that added various features. The most important of those was the addition of trend, which was produced by Charles Holt uh, in the 1950s. Um, so his method uh, can be written in a similar way to simple exponential smoothing, but with one extra equation. So here are the equations for Holt's linear trend, and you'll see that the forecast eight steps ahead, shown in the first line, is equal to the last observed level plus h times b underscore t, which is the last observed slope estimate. The level is equal to alpha times the last observed observation plus one minus alpha times the last observed level, as it is for simple exponential smoothing. But with this little addition, you adjust that based on the trend in the data. And then the third equation, which is a new equation, uh, describes how the slope changes over time. So bt, which is the slope of time t, is equal to beta star times the difference in the last two levels, plus one minus beta star times the last slope. So it's a similar idea in that you're updating your estimate every time you get a new observation. And each of the two equations for level and trend involve a weighted average with weights alpha and one minus alpha or beta star and one minus beta star. And so they're convex combinations. We're gonna use beta star because I wanna reserve beta for later on uh, for another formulation of the problem. So here we have two smoothing parameters, alpha and beta star. Both of them should stay with between zero and one so that we get the interpretation of these as weighted averages. Uh, LT is the level uh, and BT is the slope. So when we're estimating uh, this particular model, we need values for alpha and beta star. And we also need values for L0, the initial level, and B0, the initial slope, so that we can start the iterative equations there. Here's an example applied to Australian population data. Um, so the black line is population um, over time, and the blue line is our estimated trend using um, these equations, uh, where h is equal to 1. So we're looking at one-step estimates. Um, and initially, we're setting beta equals to 0. So look at what happens to the equations when beta equals 0. This term disappears. And this part of this disappears. So we've just got a 1 there. So bt is equal to bt minus 1. So every slope is the same as the previous slope, which means there's no change in the slope over time, which gives you a linear fit. So that's why we have a blue straight line there when beta equals zero. But as beta gets larger, uh, it's more adaptive to changes in the data. And so this will become, um, it'll, it'll respond to changes in the data, it'll become nonlinear. So let's see what happens if we increase beta here. Oops, see if I can make this work. There we go. So beta's increasing. Um, and it doesn't have to get very big for it to start tracking the data quite closely. And if uh, beta gets too large, then the, the estimated trend gets too wiggly and it's jumping around because it's trying to respond to little wiggles in the data set. Um, so we want a relatively small value of beta. Let's go back to the backwards as we make it smaller again. Um, so as you make it smaller, it gets smoother, uh, less responsive to the changes in the data. And somewhere relatively small value of beta, maybe about 0.1. Um, it should be about right. Let's stop it there, nearly at 0.1. Uh, even that's probably too much. Um, about there may be better. So it's it's sort of following the trend of the data, but it's adapting to the fact that the trend is increasing at the end of the series. So it's allowing it to change over time. Um, here's the R code to do those um, to, to fit that model. So we take the global economy data, we filter out the Australian part of the data, um, and then I'll, we'll change the variable to be in millions just to make the graphs better. So we'll call that pop for population. And then 
the code for fitting the model is very similar to the code for fitting simple exponential smoothing. We just have to add in um, the trend being additive like that. Okay, so we've got, we call this an AAN model for um, because the A is additive error. That's this bit. The second, that's the first A. The second A is the trend and the N is seasonality. And at this stage, we're not, not going to introduce seasonality. We'll leave that to the next section. So if you just ask it to fit that model, it'll come back with estimates of the parameters and it's chosen an alpha as one, a beta as 0.327 and L0 as 10.1 and B0 as 0.22. And it gives you another bit of information about the model. If we uh, then take that model and uh, up, um, use the components function, we'll get the individual components, the level and the slope and the remainder. And we can plot them to see what's going on. And you can see the level is pretty close to the, to the data, slightly smoother. Uh, the slope is giving you the estimate of the trend in the data. So it's um, staying sort of around 0.2 for most of the series. And then it jumps up to about 0.35 near the end, where we had that increase in slope at the end of the series. And then the remainder should be just the noise that's left. Um, let's now take the components and add in the fitted values and the remainder, and we get a nice table like this, which uh, helps see how the method works. Um, so we can see the data is in this column here, um, the pop column. Uh, it begins in 1960, but because we estimate the level and the slope at time zero, that's the year before, so this is the L0 figure there, that's the B0 figure there. And then they're updated as each new observation comes along. So we see um, first observation here, and that gives us an updated estimate of the level using the level equation. And it gives us an updated estimate of the slope using the slope equation. The remainder is the difference between what we saw and what we predicted we would see. Now, what we predicted we would see is forecast equation back here. That's this guy at the top, um, this one, where h is equal to 1 and t is the previous time period. Uh, and then we can use it to go further ahead in, in time by running the, the top equation, the forecast equation forward. And so you see that it's picked up the trend at the end of the series quite well. So the the change in the trend occurs about there, and the new trend through this period is forecast forward into the forecast period. Um, and so it's locally linear. It's not fitting a straight line to the data. It's allowing the slope of the forecast line to change, and it's um, picking up the slope at the end of the series. A little later in time, uh, I, Another variation on this method was developed called the damped trend method. And in this method, the trend into the forecast period was not linear, but was actually flattening out. So instead of what we get on the previous graph where it just keeps going up at the same slope forever, in the damped trend version, it starts off at that slope, but then it flattens out like that. Um, so it dampens the trend, it dampens the slope. So the way that gets represented in mathematics is we have this additional parameter phi, and this is the Greek letter phi, and then the forecast is equal to um, this multiple times the last observed slope. And as h gets bigger, this approaches a constant. So that's why it flattens out to a horizontal line. The other two equations are very similar to what we had before. The only change is that when you see a b, um, there's a phi in front of it, so it dampens the slope. So the damping parameter phi is between 0 and 1. Uh, normally it's quite large, uh, so often, and in fact in, in the Fable package, it's constrained usually to be at least 0 0.8. If you want a damped trend model, it should be at least a 0 0.8. Otherwise, uh, this it, it dampens too quickly, and then you have numerical instabilities. If phi is equal to one, then 
that sum there is simply equal to h, uh, and you end up with exactly the same thing as Holt's linear method. As I said before, as h goes to infinity, uh, as you forecast further and further ahead, this um, expression, which is a geometric series, approaches a constant, um, and that constant is phi divided by 1 minus phi. So in the long run, the forecast will go to this constant here, the last level plus phi divided by 1 minus phi times the last slope estimate. So this gives you a model which is trended in the short run, but in the long run, the forecasts are constant. And that can be quite useful uh, in, in practice because often trends are not going to continue indefinitely. Uh, here's how to apply it uh, using the Fable package. It's exactly the same code as before, except the trend argument is AD for additive damped, an additive trend, but it's damping it. Uh, and I've uh, used a relatively high forecast horizon so that you can see the damping actually happen. See, it doesn't, if I had a short forecast horizon, you wouldn't really see it in the first few uh, forecasts, but if you give it enough forecast horizon, enough time, you'll start seeing it flattening out, but it's still not constant. It's going to keep going out like this and eventually go flat. Okay, let's now uh, look at the three models that we've introduced so far in this chapter. The simple exponential smoothing model, which has, uh, which we can write as additive error, no trend, no seasonality, that line there. The Holtz linear method, which has additive error, additive trend and no seasonality, that line there. And then the last one that we just introduced had additive error and damped trend, that line there. So that gives us the three different models fitted to the same data set. And then we can have a look at the coefficients of those models and have a look at how accurate they are using the tidy function to get the coefficients and the accuracy function to get various measures of accuracy. So we run those two commands, we will get outputs to the screen. I've just reformulated them a little bit so that it's easier to see them all together on the screen. Um, so the alpha parameter, which is the how quickly the, the level changes, is one for all three models. So it's changing quickly. The beta star parameter, which is how quickly the level the slope changes, uh, well, it doesn't exist for the simple exponential smoothing model. The other two, it's relatively large again. The slope is changing relatively quickly, the 0.3 or 0.4. The phi parameter, when we do include damping, is very high, 0.98, uh, So because there's not very much damping going on. So the larger that is, the less damping it occurs. As phi is smaller, it'll flatten more quickly. Then we have the initial level and the initial slope. Um, so not particularly informative here. Then uh, we have the root mean squared error on the training set and the root mean squared error on the test set, uh, just so that you can see that you almost always have much better fits in the training set than you do on the test set because you've used the training set to fit the model, so it should fit well. Uh, and we can compare the three models. So simple exponential smoothing here is much worse than the other two models. The linear trend model is actually doing the best here. Damping didn't help at all. If we compare on mean absolute scaled error or mean absolute percentage error or mean absolute error, we'll come to the same conclusions that the linear trend model works best for this data set. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the idea of how you introduce trend into these models. Um, we'll also introduce seasonality and some other variations on them in the future sections.